Welcome to the auditorium. Step right up. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Welcome to the shadowy world of the intangible, the invisible, and the incredible. A man with a ram. Meet Joe Coleman. Don't look now, but that ram has two extra horns, which makes it a perfect addition to Joe's Brooklyn Auditorium. And I mean auditorium. Hey, baby kids, look what I found. I got a four-headed ram. <laughs> That's just all the Now, don't just make yourself. Joe and Whitney don't just embrace life's strangest and most hideous side. They brought so much of it home, there's no room for the furniture. This is my home, but it's uh, also uh, my collection that I call the auditorium. Not to be confused with Disney World or your local museum. There are creatures in here so bizarre and unlovable, you can't imagine them living anywhere else. And this here is Cuddles, my two-headed monkey, uh, who used to uh, travel with Ward Hall's sideshow for many years. Adorable little creature there. And uh, Cuddles quit grabbing my head. <laughs> and over here is a bullet that was um, shot out of Jack Ruby's gun, the famous gun that killed Oswald. Uh, this was a bullet that was shot as a ballistics test. But some of my other uh, favorite artifacts around here, uh, getting back to uh, great killers of killers, uh, here's the autograph of uh, Florence Chandler, who married James Maybrook, who, if you believe in the Jack the Ripper diaries, that he was the true Jack the Ripper, she's the killer of Jack the Ripper, and I have her autograph. I'm fascinated by the things that are, that are the most disturbing and the most, most heinous, uh, ugliest. Uh, it's those things that, that I want to understand and to to enter in order to feel like I've confronted it and it, for it to release me. By finding that darkest thing in yourself, uh, it's kind of a, a freedom. Like I think that if you um, deny its existence, that, that you won't learn anything from it. But if you see that the horrors of life are just as much us, as much as we would like to push it away, that that is us, that is a reflection of what's inside of us. Whitney admits it's creepy, and that's just fine with her. Creepy is good. <laughs> a couple of times I've been startled, but, you know, which is kind of exciting, too, if you like suspense. So, you know, it keeps you on your toes. You have to watch your step in the middle of the night. No matter how awful it is, it's a part of us. And I want to look at it. I want to confront it. I want to try to understand it. Maybe there's something about my Catholicism that's in there as well. Because I think that um, you, ha you have to really understand um, evil to understand good. To some people, this, this home looks very, uh, uh, I don't know, scary or disturbing in some way, but it feels um, very homey <laughs> to me and uh, has a welcome feeling to me. Uh, these are all my friends, you know. You know, I'll find myself, you know, having conversations with them. <laughs> I guess the day they start talking back, that's what I gotta watch out for. Well, they seem to be chatting amongst themselves for the moment, Joe, so why don't you tell us a bit about the ringmaster here? Joe Coleman. Well, Joe's more than I can say, but but uh, I'm known as a painter, performance artist, collector, actor, uh, pathologist. <laughs> and uh, here's my alter ego, Professor Mambuzu. That's uh, my old uh, alter ego who used to perform. A smoothie like Joe's got to have a great come on. How do you romance his way into your life, Whitney? He lured me over with the promise of seeing a new jar of tumors, which I couldn't possibly resist. And upon my arrival, 
I was greeted with this beautiful Victorian taxidermied raccoon, all dressed up with a beautiful bone pipe that was carved in its mouth as a present with a big red bow around its neck. And I felt instantly comfortable. I'd never felt more comfortable in a place in my whole life. During our wedding, the uh, dwarfs carried this severed head around with guacamole in it. One dwarf carried uh, another severed head back there that had chips, but this particular severed head had guacamole in it. So you could just dip your chips in here. And uh, here's my buddy, OJ, and uh, he seemed to want to park himself right in this old uh, iron casket from the 1860s, right in front of the bedroom. So a couple of times I felt um, a little anxious walking to the shrine room in the, in the middle of the night with OJ watching, because he seems to have a particular gleam in his eye. So Joe put in night lights for me. Greta and Edna. The two genuine Fiji mermaids. This is one of P.T. Barnum's great hoaxes. It would paint this elaborate banner of this beautiful woman with a fishtail. But when you went into the actual museum, this is what you saw. Bye, Greta. Bye, Edna. And everybody else, tread water. Joe's circus isn't over yet. Stop people from giving him even more. You know, people will send me things that they think no one else is going to want, and they're gonna, then they know, oh, Joe's going to want. <laughs> and so, in a, in a way, the, um, the objects themselves have a life of their own, and that they come to me, because they, they know that at Joe's house, that's where the party is, that's where, that's where all their friends are. So I don't even have to look for them, they look for me. And I'm happy to be the, uh, the guy who takes care of all the things that no one else wants. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Tough life, Joe. As for Joe Coleman, he's on a first-name basis with every spirit in the house. Say bye to the TV audience. O.J. Simpson in your living room. Talk about bad feng shui. I'm Arthur Black. Hope you enjoyed Weird Homes. Till next time.